Cool. Oh, hello, everyone. So uh, I'm Nathan. So I'm uh, one of the product specialists for Arden's and I deal with the sister one side of things. Obviously, Charmaine is in the other one. She's Emis. So um, and I also used to work for sister one for six years. So I kind of know how system one works anyway. And then I've obviously got the Arden's experience as well. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just kind of go through some of our cancer resources that we have um, and how kind of the fit tests are kind of embedded in the templates. Um, as well as some of the searches and reports that we provide you. So like the actual IIF kind of uh, cancer zero to the, the, those, we, we've actually got the searches to identify patients that have had kind of the fit test done. Um, but we've also got some useful kind of um, searches that would look at um, maybe ones you might have missed or, or or kind of follow up and that sort of thing. So I, I'm going to share all those. I should probably share my screen because I realise that you and I'm not sharing at the moment. So let me go and share my screen and hopefully you will be able to see that. OK. Um, Hopefully that looks all right. Um, so I think the first thing that the way to approach, I was trying to think how to approach this best. Um, I'll approach this with kind of the the initial if a patient came in and we had to do like a two week wait and that sort of thing. So I'm going to do it from that kind of approach. So I mean, I'll be very I'm not going to spend too long on that. And then I'll go to the report. So I'll look at the templates first um, and kind of I mean, I could probably spend hours talking about this, so I will keep it short. Um, there are a few templates that you can use. Um, we do have some like possible cancer templates, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I think with the purpose of actually if in, in day to day, you're probably going to be starting if patients are coming in and complaining about other things. So I'll do it from that kind of scenario. So for those using Arden's already, you're probably aware. Obviously, you have all the icons under the patient's name in the top right. And those icons are kind of telling us what's going on with the patient. Um, and for those who are using it, um, you might be already um, used to the, the doctor's bag, which is the blue kind of bag with the red cross, which is what we call our, our general consultation templates was a good place to start for patients coming in um, if they're complaining of just kind of ailments maybe it's not chronic disease yet so it's kind of a good place to start so that's where I'm going to start kind of this this demonstration so if we click on the general consultation template um, we get this up which which could be just a patient coming with a sore throat or they might have you know but then it might progress onto something else and with the case of this it might be that they've got like you know abdominal pain or you know a lump somewhere that sort of thing obviously not clinicians you have to bear with me on those explanations apologies um, but um, now this template kind of mirrors what you might have already done already. And again, apologies if you've already kind of used some of this um, already, but you've got the history examination, the diagnosis and the plan, which you can kind of write up as you normally would. Um, and then we've got tabs across the top, depending on what the condition the patients come in with. So kind of to keep us on theme with kind of the fit tests and stuff, if we went to kind of the um, uh, gastrointestinal uh, tab, um, we've got everything to do with kind of an abdominal consultation for this patient. So it might start off with the patient complaining of things and you can type it in the history and examination. Um, just very quickly, there are presets on there to kind of speed this up. I will go on to the fit test thing in a minute, but I think it's good to start with this bit. Um, so for example, our presets, you know, I, I've they've got abdominal, uh, aches or pains or you know fever and loss of appetite or all those sorts of things are kind of other common things so we can kind of put these in as, as long with the examination you can you can free text what you want um but again we've got the preset where we could kind of record um uh, you know abdominal tenderness or bowel sounds reduce or any of those sorts of things that kind of are relevant so you know it could start off that sort of consultation um again areas where you can record like the numerics quick numerics temperature sats that sort of thing vitals and lifestyle again i don't want to labor too much on this because that's kind of generic consultation but as we go through um, near the bottom, um, you've got uh, links to kind of like your referral criteria or leaflets and that sort of thing. Joe, do you want to go now if you've got your hand up? Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, Nathan, that I think a lot of people on this call are actually more admin than clinical. Oh, that's OK. Um, no worries. So, Thank so you. you know, in terms of kind of the what 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 you know perhaps we need to focus on is around the fit and the searches maybe rather less than the you know than the actual that's clinical fine. bits no if worries. anybody if anybody disagrees you know stick no, something in the chat it's good but, to know it's always just, hard to know yeah, if just, i've got clinicians or admin that's what i would lump I'll, i will just show this bit because i think it's yeah, good to do, know just yes, for the that's searches really bit so Thanks. i just i just wanted to give that background so don't worry i won't talk any more about that but basically if i was a clinician you could click the referral criteria and um, what that's going to allow me to do is go on what am i doing now we can choose fast track lower gi cancer so again i think it's important to see it from this point of view because i could then go through and be like right you know this patient's got unexpected rectal bleeding or any of those sorts of things again and then what that's going to do is it's going to suggest that we it's possible lower gi cancer and then if you see all this is grayed out if i tick that it's then going to light up and exactly tell me 
kind of what I need to do next. And the main thing I wanted to point out on here was the blue stars. So for example, the blue star next to fit test requested if not already done. Basically that blue star is telling me that's something I need to do. So from the clinician point, even if I'm admin, that's going to tell the clinicians that if you see those blue stars, you need to make sure you tick that because that's going to code the correct code to say we're doing the fit test. And then that's going to affect your searches. So that was the main thing I wanted to, what I wanted to show you. Sorry. Um, now again, I could tick that and obviously we can then do a fast track two week wait code tick that we can even do our cancer safety netting so all of those are the key codes we need to code and i don't have to worry about what the codes are. i'm just ticking them but then that's gonna help out with my searches in the background um and just very quickly to the right where it says the fit test you know i can tick say i've done it but if you click the button to the right it actually opens up the fit test template which actually guide the clinician through you know what's the indication you know they're over this age and it's change of bowel habit and that sort of thing um and then you know if it, this is probably going to come in from the labs but this would allow me to record actually what the result of it was if it was done i mean i imagine most of you're going to get that from the labs so you wouldn't need to do it there but again it's given me the criteria so it, it's it's you can't really miss it if that makes sense so that's why i wanted to show that bit from that point of view is that all right joe is that anything i don't know if anyone else would want to need to know anything no that's that. helpful that's thank you brilliant. no yeah. worries cool so with that in mind and those kind of um uh, uh, codes and, and the blue stars that hopefully if they're using that they're going to be coding it correctly and they're going to be doing the the, the um uh you know but to help you from an admin point of view what we're going to do is we've obviously provided the searches so if i go up to reporting and your clinical reporting um, we've got a few areas now. I think the first thing I'm going to focus on. So, again, those of you who probably use these searches already. We're in the clinical reporting screen. This is obviously where you can build searches. We've got our Arden's limited folder. As of today, there are 49,000 reports in there, so quite a lot. But if we open that folder up, we have a subfolder called Contracts 2324NCD. Now, if I open that up. Um, we do have like our IAF searches and, and, and in particular the, the fit test one. So if we go to the IAF one there, we do have your search that is going to tell you how many of those lower GI2 referrals um, in this year with a fit test done 21 days um, leading up to it. So in the case, that's 43. So that simply put is the one that we can run to see how many have we done already. Um, and you can get a gist of like, okay, we've done that. So I guess that's the master one, if you like. It's like run that to make sure your patients are being captured on that and you can see how many you've done. Now, obviously on the flip side, there might be areas where you might need to then go, well, what if we haven't done it or do we need to do one and that sort of thing. So we've got a couple of areas now, um, I don't think we've got anything under the IF work to do. So what I would do is if you, we've got a separate one. We've got the cancer kind of management indicator as well, which would allow me to look at some of the other stuff. So um, again, you know, lower GI to referral in the last 12 months, but done 21 days. So that's like the last year's criteria, but that might be a useful one just to kind of see if you wanted to see that, that data. That's fine. Okay, no worries, Joe. <laughs> no, I don't think it is particularly useful. In fact, I think fine. it's quite, com uh, I think it's quite um, confusing actually. Uh, so fine. I do wonder whether, whether anybody would actually use that for any, any yeah, reason. I, think we, I wonder whether uh, that needs to be stepped down. Yeah, I mean, we, I can have a chat with the support guys. I know it was in yeah. there because I think they put it for you. I mean, that's where we devise it. We've got the IIF one, which is the one that you want to yeah. really be looking yeah. at, you know, lower GI. So that, that's what you've done. Um, now, then with, with regards to that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the conditions cancer folder. And if we open that one up, we've got some other searches in here that are just around kind of maintaining kind of the other codes and that sort of thing. So if we open that one up, um, we could go to, for example, our alerts folders. And what we'll have in here is a few different things. So for example, we would have a search there that is saying, should we do a fit test because a low GI two week referral has been done on these patients in the last two weeks, but no fit test has been recorded as being done so what we could do is we could look at that to go well why has it not been done do we need to do something extra there because those patients might be getting missed off so we're not saying they definitely need one but it's going to give you that crisis so you're not going to be going well hang on a sec how, how many have i done it's going to give you those patients straight away if that makes sense um so again that's going to be um a, a useful one um We've got this one, which is kind of like the flip side. So this is follow up as fit requests, uh, fit has been requested two weeks to one year ago, but no result afterwards. So you would hope the results coming in, but that's going to like go, why, where's the result? Why is it not, has it not been coded correctly? Again, the permutations of exactly why the patients are on there, you'd have to go in and have a look and there's only so much we can do. But again, that could kind of be um, a useful search that you could go in and run it and, and see, see if that's been going. Um, and then with regards to kind of like the cancer safety netting um, for fast track cancers and that sort of thing, 
Um, again, we've got some searches here that would kind of identify, you know, have we done the safety net? And if we haven't, why not? And we could run that to identify those patients as well. So we have a load of searches there that's going to actually be looking for patients that, OK, we've done this, but the fit test has not been done and that sort of thing, if that makes sense. So again, those could be quite useful. Um, and I think as well, again, it's not just the fit test stuff, but just under kind of alerts. Um, if we go to alerts NG12, um, we've got a lot of um, uh, searches in here that if, depending on the codes that have been added to the patient, it can suggest whether we need to do a, a lower GI um, fit test. So all of those searches are going to pick up those patients and say, actually, we should probably do one of these because this is going on as well. And that's looking at the coding in the patient's records. I mean, there's absolutely loads on there, for example. It's not just the fit test. It's like, do we need to do a two-week referral? Do we need to do a fit test? That sort of thing. So again, that lives in that kind of conditions cancer folder. Um, a lot of those are coming off the back of one of our templates, which is actually the NG12 symptoms finder. What that does is that looks at again stuff in the patient record and it's going to suggest that you should do maybe a lower GI referral. So those can be seen from a clinician point of view in the template. And you can get them to look at it that way, but off the back of it, if they've put codes in the patient record but forgotten to do the, the two-week referral or missed it, those are really good safety net to make sure that they are doing that. Sorry, Joe, do you want to go again? No, I know. I was just going to say, so those are really useful for kind of practice level based, you know, um, good practice, good, good, uh, yeah. good improving referral um, practices and things like that. So those are really useful for 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 those particular areas um, yeah. in terms of the fit test. That's also a way of making sure that you're definitely doing the fit tests on the right patients yes. um, and 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 as you say identifying patients that that may benefit from a fit test in terms of the actual IIF the 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 one that you said I think the the um the IIF template that you have perhaps if we could just go back to that just uh, the to searches, actually search mean, or... for yeah so to yeah, search sorry. for the sorry yeah my no, my bad <laughs> um searches for the the one the patients that have been referred on the lower gi um urgent suspected cancer referral pathway that have had the test is that first yeah. one isn't it so yeah, and that that's, the that's the one the key one that's the yeah. key one that's going to need to be searched for for the purposes of meeting the thresholds for the iif payments um and obviously there will be within that there may be i mean i've run it in my practice um there may well be people who have the exceptions to the need to needing the fit but that haven't actually been coded as such properly so so one of the ones i came across was a rectal mass but it hadn't actually been coded as a rectal mass so it, it may be worth your while going back into those searches, actually running those searches, looking directly at the patients and just seeing if there's any um, any patients that would would fall into those exceptions and coding them correctly, because that will also alter your numbers. I'm going to shut up now. No, no, don't worry. Jay. I mean, it's the, I mean, again, from my point of view, there's not loads to kind of, it, you know, it's, it's quite obvious kind of where they are and, 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 and what to do. So I think the key takeout would be it, we, we the, the contracts 2324 NCD folder is where all the, the national contracts. So not just this, obviously, all the other stuff. I know this call is, is on the, the, the fit test stuff. And then that's why we've just got the IEF indicator, you know. Your main search is there's four of the five that we would run. Obviously, we're looking at that one, but that's that's the place you go basically to find it. As I say, we've got other searches that are under of the management indicators. They're less to do with IAF and just more how you're doing, like that cancer one and stuff. But yeah. again, it, it's it's not as I think you know. Um, that's more just you know how many two we refers have we done for suspected cancer. But for this, you want the IAF one because yeah. the IAF is, is is the payment stuff. So yeah. I can't we can't really stress that enough. And then with regards to Arden's everything else around cancer that isn't IAF, but still people would just live under the conditions cancer folder. Um, and as I say, the alerts ones are really good because that's going to be looking at areas where you might be missing stuff. You know, as I said. So I think the key takeouts would be the conditions cancer folder and the and the NCD folder. Um, I don't know whether it's worth me just showing you again this is more for the clinicians but just it'll be very quick I won't go into too much detail but just going back to the doctor's bag on here um just a, a good thing to show you clinicians um I know I went to like the gastrointestinal tab but we do have on the front screen
screen and it's a separate template in itself, the NG12 Cancer Symptoms and Findings Analyzer. Um, if I click on that, what it would do is it will show me current symptoms that this patient has. So if I was a clinician, I could see something, then I could do it from there. But I could also click on the symptoms and findings. And it's kind of those, I if you're not really sure why, if I went to abdominal, it's then going to give me, you know, have they got any of these things? So for example, if I, you know, pelvic pain and I don't know, you know, abdominal pain that sort of thing if I click OK on those things um, what it's going to do is then basically on that screen it's updated automatically and it's telling me that the lower GI fit test as over you know over 50 that's right over 50 if unexplained abdo page so it's kind of telling me what to do as well off the back of what I put in so good for the clinicians and what will happen now is that patient will fall onto that search I showed you so if the clinician ignored that you've always got the safety net of the search that I showed you um, because that's that's how they're getting on there and then the rest of this template I could link through to like the upper GI template and I could even record the fit test has been done down the bottom etc so it's another angle again more for the clinicians um, I would say if you wanted uh, as an area or individual view practice, if you wanted a more kind of clinic, clinical based look at this or a cancer resources webinar over all of this and feel free to put that in as well. I know that's not the purpose of the day, but there are possibilities of of having more training on this if you did want to delve into this a bit more. Um, I appreciate it's a lot to show and I'm trying to skim it over it as much as I can. But yeah, there is that. Um, I don't know, Joe, if there's anything else you wanted me to cover that I haven't or. No, that's brilliant. I think I think it's really useful to be able to see how if the clinicians use it you know, in the way that it's designed to be used, yeah. that actually the searches are, you know, a backup rather than, you know, the way of, of, of yeah. just picking them up. Um, yeah. And I have to admit that I am, um, you know, not using it in the way that I probably should. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. so I, I, I may come back to you on that. Please do, um, Joe. No, you're so welcome. Something that I wondered um, was the searches that you, that you have put in the, 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 um, is it NCD? You said it was NCD, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NCD. Um, uh, I could just get it right. Um, do they update automatically, or do practices need to do something in order to make sure that they're running that they can see the correct uh, NCD searches? on their um, systems we we update everything automatically so you don't have to worry about anything so you probably would have noticed that this year the 23 24 folder changed and we just created an IAF and it was there I think right. just I, I don't, not to confuse everyone but if we went down to the contracts previous year and then went to the NCD one there we've got yeah. all no don't use these but that is what we do is we'll lump it away in another folder so if you did need to run something for last year it's there but okay. you can ignore it. So you don't need okay. to worry about anything. We will update everything automatically. So basically just go to that folder IIF and that will be the up to date. And even if we, if something changed or there was a new indicator, heaven forbid, you know, that this year, it would just be in there. So you wouldn't need to do anything. We would just update right. it. Right. Okay. No, that that's good to know as well. So yeah. that it, you know, when anybody goes back to the practice, um, when they're looking for it, it should be there. So obviously yeah. if, if, if you're not seeing it, um, you know, we'll need to know about that. So, uh, so, so I, I guess you know let us know but uh it it it, it should be there so yeah, go should. go away and have a look when you when we're done <laughs> yeah. um was there any anything that anybody else um kind of wanted to kind of put in the chat that you you wanted Nathan to run through before we go back into the main session so feel free to yeah. to stick anything in the chat or have we bamboozled you with with I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know all these lots of information I know. and it's hard that's why I felt bad at the start like I did know I, was like, I didn't want to go too long to the clinical view, but <laughs> it was just nice to hear that background of like you said just what the clinician might do so that yeah. you know the reports are picking up yeah. the same thing so yeah, yeah. so do um, so do do feel free to go back and tell your clinicians to use it um you know yeah. in, a, in a more in a more robust manner I think um if you're not clinical uh because uh, I think it's really important because you know I'm sure a lot of us don't. Yeah, we've got just just an FYI as well. We've got a load of resort. If you go to our help pages, which <laughs> you can do on the on the template. So if I was on the doctor's bag and then say I went to the cancer symptoms analyzer, if you click help and feedback in the top right, that will always open up the help files anyway. Um, and that talks about that template. So again, I'm thinking more everyone on this call, if you wanted to go back and show your clinicians, you could just point them to these pages and there'll be some videos and stuff that they could watch to talk them through this as well. Um, and there's always like the contact us button up there. Um, as I say, like we have 
have got training available so if people and it doesn't cost anything as well so you know people like free things but um if you wanted to put some training for your practice or or, or joe you know uh, for the area or, or for your practice or whatever let us know because we can book stuff in and you know we could have a cancer session or or, or anything you want um uh, but yeah. you know fyi that's, anyway i'll shut up sorry <laughs> that's really really helpful today thank you so much no worries no worries um I think there's no messages coming in the chat, either that or I can't see them. So um, I can't see any obvious questions immediately. So I think um, if we're, oh, hang on, there may be something. Oh, oh yes, can you share your contact oh, yeah, details? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no worries, Let, I'll put the email address in. Um, it's really easy to remember because it's literally training at ardens.org.uk, but that will go through, I'll put it, I'm putting it in the chat now, so you've got it, uh, training at ardens.org.uk, that will go through to Sarah and the team, they will then know, and, and I mean obviously you guys are system one, but it's the same email for the emails, and then they'll work out where you are, and we, we, we can give you some availability and get something put in. So, yeah. yeah, brilliant, thank you very much. No worries.